So welcome everyone. Let us start. So we were, uh, I think we uh, finished this paragraph on uh, page 11, where the last few lines that we talked about was, uh, you will have to be patient and persistent and vigilant, sleepless as the adepts say, you must always refuse to give any chance, whatever to the undivine against the divine. So I think we can uh, take an overlap from here and then we can start the new paragraph today. Because this I believe uh, is very important in the last few lines. And also before this, so would anyone like to maybe, yeah, would anyone like to read these few lines uh, for us just to make an overlap and maybe have more reflections over this. Kyataru, you want to be? Yeah. Once you are conscious, it means that you can distinguish and sift things. You can see which are the forces that pull you down and which help you on. And when you know the right from the wrong, the true from the false, the divine from the undivine, you are to act strictly up to your knowledge, that is to say, resolutely reject one and accept the other. The duality will, the duality will present itself step and at every step, you will have to make your choice. You will have to be patient and persistent and vigilant, sleepless, as the adepts say. You must always refuse to give any chance, whatever, to the undivine against the divine. Yeah, thank you. So I think this is really, uh, for me, uh, it appears to be the crux of the matter. And as mother says that once, you know, the line begins with once you are conscious. So in my ignorance, of course, all my sins will take me, you know, all my stumblings will take me. Ultimately, there is only one destination. We have to unite with the divine consciousness. But once I am aware, what are the workings of ego consciousness that I don't have to identify myself with my moods, my feelings, my thoughts, my opinions, my ideas, all that I have to get detached from. I have to disidentify. I have to stop knowing myself as my thoughts. I have to stop knowing myself as my feelings. I have to stop knowing myself as this limited person that I believe I am. So this is such a, uh, I feel this is such a powerful process. If one really sticks to this little tool, it's nothing very complicated. As mother says that all the surface movements that you see are happening. The flow of thoughts, you know, this vicious loop of stories that goes on in the head, bad feelings, good feelings that rise and go down, my moods. I have to become a conscious witness of that all of that and i have to actively so that's why they call this process active surrender it's not a passive surrender because now i i can see that oh i i was having this thought about this person so i can see my thought once i see the thoughts and storylines forming in my head i have the capacity to dissociate and to not tightly believe in these 
limited windows that the sense mind gives me. So I think this for me is very, very critical, this path of active surrender. And as mother says that, you know, that she gives us that uh, image that once you know, you can either take the straight path to the unification with the divine or you keep on banging your heads on all the walls and, you know, like take a big detour. Ultimately, the destination is one. But it feels really stupid that once we know and all of us know, you know it's not that all of us present here or the ones who would be maybe listening later, stumbling upon it later. Uh, everyone knows now. We have read enough, we have discussed enough, we have reflected enough. But now, if right now I don't take the action in my day-to-day -day life to contently, const continuously disidentifying myself with the surface movement. Constantly, no, I am not this mood. The moment a mood arising, you know, the, the moment ill will against someone is arising, jealousy, ambition, pride, whatever is arising. No, I am not this. And standing back, taking the stance, taking a stance away from that surface movement. So solidifying ourselves in the witness stance. So once you are conscious, it means that you can distinguish and sift things. So there is a discerning intelligence, which is now for me available. You can see which are the forces that pull you down and which help you on. So would following this bad mood pull me up? You know, would following this excitement pull me up? Would following this storyline pull me up? Constantly, like, you know, this, with this discerning intelligence, constant on my guard. You can see which are the forces that pull you down and which help you on. You know, is uh, sticking to the mother, is remembering mother pulling me up? You know, we can see for ourselves. And when you know the right from the wrong, true from the false, the divine from the undivine, you are to act strictly up to your knowledge. So in my ignorance, whatever I did, okay, all forgiven, taken as a learning. But now when I know not to make it my part of active life 24 hours, that's I think really stupid uh, from our side. So now you are to act strictly up to your knowledge. That is to say, resolutely reject one and accept the other. So in each moment, I have a choice. Whether I believe the storylines or I stick to mother's name and bring the mind home in the body every moment. What do I choose? What do I do? I will have to reject the other, which is not taking me up. So it's a very, that's why we call it the warrior or the Aryan spirit because it requires a lot of courage to not act how I used to act just a while ago. Lot of courage. So resolutely reject one, accept the other. And I think along with courage, it's also a lot of self-love that I have tortured my, myself enough, limited, suffocated myself enough. And now I want to be loving towards myself. So I don't want to be this limited self all the time and believing in all these dictates. So a lot of, I believe, self-love. The duality will present itself at every step and at every step you will have to make your choice. So again, a very active process. We don't have time to sleep here. You know that, oh, for five hours I have been in my active mode. Now I can chill and you know, live, uh, live up to the dictates of the ego. And we won't be able to actually do that. We will feel that unease if we do that. You will have to be patient and persistent and vigilant, sleepless as the adepts say. So many masters have said like, I have to be sleeplessly vigilant because the ego strikes any time. The storylines, at any moment, I begin to believe again in the thoughts and patterns created in the head. Again, I listen to my mood. Again, I listen to my feeling. You must always refuse to give any chance, whatever, to the undivine against the divine. So not identifying with our little, little petty desires, which really don't take us anywhere. And identifying more and more with purity within, with the divine mother within. And... Uh, 
living it out, really practically living it out. And I believe this is possible. This is possible. Takes effort, takes persistence, but we also then have a taste of this purity, increasing purity in each one of us. So I just wanted to take this up again because I thought this was uh, very important, although we had shared something on it earlier. So any thoughts, any reflections on this? Anyone? Okay, so I'm assuming there is no reflection at this moment. So then we will go ahead and take the take up the new lines. So finding your own way. This is where we have to start today. Yeah, would anyone like to read it out? For us? I can read it. Ashweta, your uh, voice is not that clear. Can you bring the microphone closer? Yeah, uh, is it better now? Yeah, better, but not that, like, it's not really clear. Oh, really? Okay, because I can hear you. Uh, are okay. you using a earphone? Earphone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Achha, toh uska mic, if Haan. you can bring Abhi it. Yeah, okay. better, better, better. Okay, so I'll just read it. Finding your own way, the mother. To cling to what you believe you know, to cling to what you feel, to cling to what you love, to cling to your habits, to cling to your so-called needs and to cling to the world as it is, that is what binds you. You must undo all that, one thing after another, undo all the time. And it has been said thousands of times and people go on doing the same thing. Even those who are most eloquent and preach it to others, cling. They cling to their way of seeing, to their way of feeling, their habit of progress, which seems for them the only one. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, anyone, uh, anything to share from this? I just want to add that it's been a daily reflection for me. <laughs> Ye jo hai na, like literally, you know, and uh, uh, you try, and yet unknowingly you catch yourself. You know, like abhi fir se you were clinging. You every moment is like, uh, and it's a practice. Sometimes you're able to remember more, and uh, you know, uh, sometimes less. And uh, that just tells me that uh, vigilance is like you can't let go of that. And it's like moment by moment practice. You know? I was just thinking, yeah, remembering mother and uh, the other way, like what uh, I was thinking today was uh, like, you know, uh, I've heard so many times, what would God do? Remember that in that situation, what would God do? So remember, and it's all, it all comes to the same thing. Like, you know, uh, you always say like, uh, always remember mother surrender it to mother and you know like uh, just offer it to mother and sometimes you also hear you know like saying uh, remember how would god behave like you know like so ye sara kuch ab ja kar samajh aa raha hai ki sadhi matlab kaafi time se sun rahe it it's all leading to the same thing that vigilance yeah thank you yes yes i think that and that also is a beautiful uh, step ahead to be able to see that I am clinging what you were sharing so that itself gives us a breathing space that now I can choose seeing that I am clinging I have the possibility uh, to hold it lightly not tightly yeah Mostly clinging to the ego only, in different ways, but how ego just this way or that way, you know, it just comes and attaches itself. The, you know, one moment you are like not aware and uh, you just catch it like, uh, Are fir se aa gaya. Is se aa gaya. Us se aa gaya. but 
you know like uh, it's a dodging all the time and being vigilant you know yeah rightly said yes yeah. yeah would anyone like to share any reflections on this yeah um hi hi claudia yeah did you hear me yes 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 we can hear you please go okay. ahead yeah. okay um yes um i was giving this class to a student and she was telling me Oh my God, I promised something to myself, you know, that I never will cook ever, ever in my life, you know, to, for, to a man. And so this promise is like a kind of a cling, yes, that we sometimes do to ourselves. Maybe when we were teenagers, we do these clings, you know, we do these promises like, oh yes, I never going to marry it. Oh, I never going to have something like this, you know, and then, you catch yourself doing. But for me, it's very, very good to observe that because I, I see that my brain and my subconscious sometimes have this clinging to ideas, ideologies. And then I catch myself not speaking to someone. And I say, oh my God, I am clinging to that, you know, to that idea. So it's just something I want to share. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's so grounding uh, to see that I also cling. <laughs> so when I see somebody else talking, interacting and seeing that, yes, somebody else is also clinging to their ideas, then we, we feel on the same ground that, yes, it's OK, you know, not in the sense that you uh, allow in yourself that clinging to happen in the sense that we all are sinners in that sense. And all of us have the capacity to transcend that clinging. So we, we can easily forgive that clinging. Once you know that it is there present in me also, I also cling. And it's only then when I become conscious of clinging that I can drop it, let it go. So same for the other person also. You know, The other person also in ignorance we cling. But for the other person also, the transcendence from clinging is possible. So I think there we stop categorizing that good people, bad people, or, you know, more elite and less elite. So it's a very good grounding for us to see our own clinging and again, to have that breathing space to let it go and expand. And when we don't cling, we actually feel a very expanded. It, in, it may be a bit discomforting in the beginning to not cling to my way of thinking, but when we actually lose that grip, loosen that grip of uh, uh, that we have on our opinions, ideas, thoughts, or the thing that you were sharing that I would never cook for a man, you know, that makes us so limited. That makes us so limited. So we naturally feel very expanded when we open up our mind a bit. And Sri Aurobindo says that supramental manifestation cannot be with this limited mentality that we have. We have to make our mind very supple, vast, flexible, and to be able to take two opposing point of views, seeming opposite, and to be able to still sit on one table and you know uh, discuss and reflect over it, and that requires a lot of grounding. So, courage and grounding. Yeah. Because many a times we we may disagree. <laughs> You know, I, maybe I say, okay, I disagree with you. Let's agree to that. But then we, we don't have a goodwill for that person. <laughs> we are, uh, you know, we, we have some, something negative about that person. Why did he not agree to my point of view or something? You know, some ill will is there. So to, to see that uh, I'm not able to yet understand someone's point of view, but maybe in, in time I will understand. Uh, maybe more light I will have on my mind and I will understand and not to have this ill will. If we disagree, it doesn't matter. It, right now I'm, I, have, I have limited vision, but that doesn't make me superior, other person inferior because we always keep on categorizing. So I think if that categorizing can uh, be seen, 
only then can it be let go of. And once Tenzing Palmo was sharing that if I would share one mantra in Buddhism, it's not Om Mani Padme Hum, it's let go. And when we are talking about non-clinging, it's letting go. It doesn't matter. Divine has infinite number of ways to work and we have no idea in what ways things can work. So not clinging to my ways of life or yeah, thinking, feeling. My way is the right way. There we have ego clashes. I want to share that, um, I mean, reading the mother and I stay with you guys, I helped me so much. I am so, so happy and grateful because opened my mind. And also I think it's because I, I see that the mother and the divine, like you say, once a chance in everybody, and if it's allowed in that the play happen like this, it's because of something, yes? I mean, if the guy that is the criminal guy exists, it's for something, you know? It's because of society, and we need to grow up in certain level. So when we judge them and when we just categorize them, we are going in the level, in the same level. And when we cling to that, like, oh, I, I hate them. Oh, oh, I have fear. Then we go to the same level, yes? So yes, if we miss, oh, it's just such a, I mean, thank you. I mean, just have so much gratitude for this. Uh, yes, um, I just want to say that. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I think this paragraph is pretty, very crisp and clear. To cling to what you believe you know. It's amazing to see the clarity with uh, microscopic details where mother, you know, with mother's words that comes when we have, whenever we go through them. To cling to what you believe you know to cling to what you feel again as we were talking in the earlier paragraph to again and again disidentifying from the surface flow of thoughts flow of feelings moods you know the up and up and ups and downs to cling to what you feel because even when we talk about feelings uh, we give so, too much importance to our feelings you know and we take them as the real you know and you would see that in one particular situation if there are 10 people looking at one particular thing, everyone would have different feeling about it. Not everyone would be feeling the same. So who is right? And there was this story, you know, where uh, I think uh, somebody asked Buddha. Uh, I can't remember the exact anecdote that uh, so he explained some situation and then one disciple came to Buddha and explained that, do you think this is right? And Buddha says to him, yes, this is right. Then another person comes, gives his own explanation about the situation. And he asks Buddha, do you think this is right? And the Buddha says, yes, this is right. And to 10 people, Buddha says, okay, you are right, you are right. And then the 11th one, he's wondering, how can it be true? <laughs> how can they all be right? And then, so he asks Buddha, how can they all be right? And then Buddha says, yes, you are right too. <laughs> So it's really strange that, you know, infinite possibilities and each one is having this little window and he's right, you know, but there is always more to that picture. So not to cling to our feelings that my feeling about this thing is right. Always keeping the grip a bit loose uh, so that, you know, I, I am, I am feeling this, but I don't know. I don't know whether my feeling is true or not. So having that grounding, that humility, I think that really helps us to be open-minded to the unfolding of life. So to cling to what you feel, to cling to what you love. Again, you know, we, we, our love is mixed. Whatever we love, we want to possess. And that comes very naturally in our first material possessions. My car, my property, you know, my things and the other thing is uh, people in our life whom we claim we love 
and we try to possess them as material objects. Just because uh, we don't know the way towards happiness is not possessing. We know that the more we try to cling to a person, cling to anything, we still remain very empty and in fact torture ourselves and the other. So with love comes freedom. Not, and usually our love is mixed with clinging. It's like one drop of pure love and 10,000 trash emotions with that. So that has to be purified, sifted, that has to be sorted so that only pure love remains. And mother says, Sri Aurobindo say that human love is a very good beginning uh, towards divine love. Because in when we have uh, some kind of human love in our life, we see that I am so complicating things by being too sticky, too clingy to that person. So can I purify and refine my love? That only love remains and no clinging. So that itself can be a sadhana for me. So to cling to what you love, to cling to your habits. Many times we say, I am like that. What can I do? You know, this is my habit and we think that habits cannot be changed, but we all know that they, if we really want the unskillful habits to change, they can. So to cling to your habits, to cling to your so-called needs, you know, seeing that, oh my God, oh my God, what will happen if I don't have this? You know, And we realize that no matter whatever is taken away from our life, we still can survive. So not to cling to our needs as, you know, that without this, without having two meals per day, I cannot survive. Why not? Without having 10 hours of sleep, I cannot survive. Why not? Why not? So again, challenging our habits. You know, uh, I think it's good to challenge our habits from time to time. Changing and seeing that, yes, this also works, that also works. Wow. You know, so it makes us again more expanded, more supple to cling to your so-called needs and to cling to the world as it is that, okay, this is how the world is. First, we walk the path in blind ignorance and then only we climb up. That doesn't have to be all the time. Things can change. So we don't have to be first a sinner and then move towards divine. Yes, that is also working, you know. When we commit sins, it makes us grounded. So that has its right place. But once I know the right path, true path, what is the need to delay? And saying that, no, I have to first follow desires blindly, you know, fall again and again, and only then I will become convinced. Why? Although everything has a right place, but Again, I think the urgency of the moment is that more and more of us become pure gold, as Mother says. You know, so though, to cling to the world as it is, that okay, this is how the world is, materialistic, consumerist, and this is how it is going to remain. Why to cling to such a world? That is what binds you. So all this clinging at various levels that Mother has shared, you know, in my thoughts, in my feelings, in my love, you know, in my habits, needs, day-to-day -day needs, and in world views, in opinions. All this clinging binds us, makes us limited, suffocated. And then we wonder, why am I feeling suffocated? <laughs> we are not feeling suffocated because of the outer circumstances. It's the mind that suffocates us. We can be in a forest and yet feel suffocated because the same mind I carry everywhere. And we can be in like two by two room because of some reason trapped. And if the mind is free, I am free. So mother says you must undo all that. So unlearning as we say, undoing. You, and it's an active process of undoing. It's not a passive process. So you must undo all that one thing after another step by step looking at everything now this light of consciousness that i am which makes everything seen the more i identify myself with this light of consciousness within the more power i have to transform my life undo all the ties whatever binds me suffocates me limits me mostly here in the head that has to be undone 
one has to be having so much love for oneself one's inner freedom inner you know expansion that whatever no matter how much discomfort i have to go through i am not going to be bound within undo all these ties that mother shares in the earlier lines and it has been said thousands of times that people go and people go on doing the same thing even those who are most eloquent and preach it to others so many a times when we are you know having reflective views of okay this is what i think this is what you know i believe even there we think that we are spiritual but i am still clinging so the mind is still the same it's the clingy mind it's the egoistic mind that has to undergo a radical shift that clinginess that stickiness so most of the times we see that even in spiritual domain uh, the mind remains sticky mind nothing has changed it's just like a different mask it has now it, uh, it's wearing a different mask the mask of spirituality you know earlier it was mask of materialism now it's mask of spirituality i'm still sticking nothing has really changed so they and that's why we have cults religions who become cults even masters who around them they generate communities which becomes more like rigid dogmatic cultish and again suffocating because again we the mind still remains the sticky limited mind so they cling to their way of seeing to their way of feeling their habit of progress which seems for them the only one and this has to be uprooted this has to be uprooted so true spirituality true living would be uh, you know really becoming so vast flexible open we can aspire towards that flexibility that we allow all the things to have their right place proper place and yet go beyond go beyond go be beyond because there is no end to this going beyond so very expansive uh, and crisp paragraph yeah any reflections before we go further Okay, so if not, please, uh, if would anyone like to read? Yeah, I think this much. I can read. Yeah, yeah. No more bonds, free, free, always ready to change everything, except one thing, to aspire this thirst. I understand very well there are people who do not like the idea of the divine, but you don't need that. The something you need, the light you need, the love you need, the truth you need, the supreme perfection you need, and that is all. The formulas, the fewer formulas, the better, but this need, which nothing alone can satisfy nothing else, no half measures, only that. And then go. Your way will be your way. That has no importance. Whatever the way, it doesn't matter. Even the extravagances of the modern American youth can be a way that has no importance. Thank you. So how amazing, you know, in the last line, as mother says, <laughs> even the extravagances of the modern American youth can be away. So again, we see that vastness. And you know, this remember, I remember one thing, there was this, I'm forgetting the name, one uh, disciple uh, of mother, who was settled, he was an Indian, but she was settled in America for a long time. 
and she used to keep herself very like pretty with designer whatever you know good sarees and uh, lipstick and all that and i remember that uh, i was reading going through her letters or whatever anecdotes and uh, somebody was sharing that mother uh, did not want her to drop all that that she loved so she actually gave her some money or maybe provided accessories that okay you have that lipstick you know keep that lipstick with you <laughs> and you don't have to abandon these things you know if you it's like an it's a natural inclination for you so keep it you know you can keep all that and yet continue with sadhana so how expensive is that because usually whenever we talk about about you know going to a master or having sadhana it means like dropping uh, whatever you love and we undergo so much of sacrifice which is like almost like self immolatory sacrifice that you know you torture yourself so we don't need to torture ourselves and uh, we can have along with the things that we take delight in and how amazing coming from the mother that she's providing that oh no you keep your lipstick with you you keep your good sarees with you and yet walk the path can't imagine this happening so no more bonds free free you know we all have this taste for freedom and that's why when we become adults and if we have lived a very conditioned limited life as children we we want to now really push our parents away and have that freedom in our life it is if it has not been granted earlier that because what whatever freedom we get it's always limited you know and we don't have a taste for limited we always want more and more and more you know more free more free but again with freedom uh, comes responsibility so i think it comes in time that we also relish freedom but we are responsible about that freedom because freedom can doesn't mean licentiousness as they say that i am so free that i can jump a red light not in that sense but inward freedom because mother was also again talking about inward ties all that bonds bond kind of bonds us within ourselves my beliefs my feelings my moods my world views this is all inner happening so there mother talks about no more bonds i think this is true freedom true freedom is not uh, whatever we think in outer context true freedom is being master of our thoughts master of our feelings master of our moods you know the moment i want the mind to sit with the breath for 30 minutes the mind listens and sits with the breath for 30 minutes that's true freedom mastery and the moment i want the mind now to engage in analytical reflection then it reflects analyzes and it knows when to stop so this is true freedom because right now we are a slave of our thoughts they come and we listen and we have no other option but to buy into them so no more bonds talking about inward bonds free free again true inner freedom always ready to change everything except one thing to aspire and this thirst so this thing which is keeping us alive the thirst towards perfection you know to aspire towards becoming more and more an expansive lim- unlimited version of ourselves to become a better and better and better and there is no end to this betterment person so there mother says that everything can change but don't you know change this thirst and aspiration that is keeping us alive because that is what it's like a rocket has a propulsion you know so it has like fire beneath it and that's why it's go it going out in space so this aspiration is our propulsion that's what is pushing me towards from animal man to a man and then a divine man that's what is pushing me if aspiration is not there nothing doing so this fire this agni of aspiration fire of aspiration that is what will propel us further like a rocket 
into our future becomings what we have to become and then mother reflects upon that many people don't like the word divine uh, we, we we may not call ourselves that i believe in a divine so mother says okay nothing doing no problem don't bother about the word i understand very well that there are people who do not like the idea of a divine but mother says but you don't need that <laughs> again you know how expensive how expensive she is the divine mother and because she knows that divine again infinite possibilities infinite possible ways of approaching the same thing so we don't need to use the word divine but you don't need that the something you need the light you need and we all need that we we feel that something is missing from my life i don't know what but something so mother is referring to that something hmm? the something you need the light you need the love you need the truth you need the supreme perfection you need and that is all and if we become very honest with ourselves we would admit that we are all needing something in our life which somehow is not getting fulfilled by possessing people and material possessions still that something is not there so mother says that something and that is all the formulas the fewer formulas the better so no need to conceptualize philosophize it that much and put it into formulas rigid formulas that this is how it is going to work or not else it cannot work so fewer formulas better but this need a need which the thing alone can satisfy the thing again thing with a capital t uh, it must be for a reason the thing alone can satisfy nothing else no half measures only that and i think the honesty that's why is a cornerstone in spiritual path because many a times we don't even admit that i am missing something in life still having so much property wealth people around me that i love still something is missing we don't admit so that admission that yes there is still something lacking so mother says it's only that the thing alone can th- satisfy nothing else no half measures only that and then go means to take take it forward and allow the life to unfold for us your way will be your way that has no importance whatever the way it does not matter even the extravagances of modern american youth can be a way that has no importance so again a bit of relaxation i think comes because people who are coming from that background for example in this case mother is referring to modern american youth it could be any background you know i don't have to feel that that is my baggage even having that conditioning i can walk the path have the true unfolding of life yeah so beautiful yes anyone any reflections Hi Monica. So uh, yes. the last line, it says, "Your way will be your way." That has no importance. So what is that? That I didn't understand. I didn't quite get that. And also the, again in the last line it says that it doesn't even the extravagances of the modern American youth can be a way. That has no importance. so could you just explain a bit of that yeah would anyone want to uh, share on what priyanka asked yeah. 
so i believe uh, again you know just a little window priyanka what comes to me here is that uh, no matter whatever conditioning may be because what is modern american youth if we reflect over that it's just a matter of the way i have been brought up you know the one can say more of individualism you know and more of uh, consumerism as we say modern american youth and again a very limited window so feel free to correct if uh, mistaken so what i believe is that no matter whatever conditioning i am coming from and all the conditionings are very limited so again i am operating the, from this narrow field and mother says that it has no importance wherever you are coming from whatever conditioning you are coming from it doesn't matter because even then your way will be your way and the ultimate is that the true the genuine divine presence within us has to take the charge of my being now that can happen if i am modern american old indian you know red indian indigenous it doesn't matter that's what i feel mother is saying that it doesn't matter where you are coming from because many a times we bind ourselves in these ideas that you know if if in india more spiritual you know then i have more possibility but if i am not in india not spiritual not much possibility so that binding doesn't need to be there the flowering of human consciousness can happen anywhere the unfolding of my life can happen in any limited frame wherever i am starting my ground from so if it has to be the extravagant why because there is a lot of consumerism in that and too much of licentiousness also that that is there where i may start from and that can be my way so uh, i believe that this is a pointing towards it doesn't matter where we are starting from because we all will be starting from some conditioning some limitation limitation because the journey is towards the unlimited so the limitation whatever it is modern american post modern integral red indian indigenous all these is allowed and yet the journey can unfold and whatever is the way will be my way and that mother says has no importance why i believe why it said that it's no importance because many a times we feel that see my unfolding has such a special taste <laughs> look at my unfolding of life such a special taste and everyone has a special taste but that is secondary that is really secondary so yet we are all special and along with that we are all ordinary so our uniqueness no matter how unique it may be it is very secondary so i think mother maybe if i am right then it's like bringing us back on the same ground not to just get to a high in the air or too much into the ground Ooh. walk the journey yeah. simply plainly yes claudia i want to to add to what monica said that what i understand also is that uh, you can live uh, in a palace with luxury, you know, or have a position of a president or be like someone that clean uh, houses or that bake bread. I mean, doesn't matter what is your role in this life, you can always have connection with the divine and doing the work. Um, the only thing that she's telling you is just don't cling to that. Don't cling to your role. Uh, remember that it's given to you for uh, for a reason. And <laughs> I mean, you just don't identify with your beauty if you have a beautiful body or, or you have an amazing mind, you know, and you can like be someone that can write a lot of books, you know, just don't identify with that. And, and that's it. Beautiful, very crisp. Thank you for sharing, yes. Thank you, Monica. So you know, I think I, I think what I understood was that also a perspective from my limited window that when mother says that the something you need in the upper lines, you know, the, la the light you need, the love you need, 
the truth you need, the supreme perfection you need. And when I connect this with the other thing, I, that's what I'm trying to understand that when you have that connect with that light, when you have that truth, when you have the aspiration for the supreme perfection and, and the love, all that when you have, when that bit, that connect, that bit is uh, there, then probably outwardly, whatever you might be doing, howsoever you might be living uh, outwardly, but probably that has no importance, you know, because uh, often when we see people if we, and we see their outer life, we make a judgment on that. But you never know that a person who might be wearing a, a saffron robe or a person who might be very extravagantly dressed or as you said, as you gave an example some time back of a, a, of a sadhak who was like, you know, who would love to dress up and would like to, you know, wear designer clothes and all that. So outwardly, howsoever, you know, and the mother allowed that, you know, outwardly, howsoever you might appear, but it is the inner story, it is the inner, if that, if those things, those four things that mother has mentioned, if that bit is somewhere, you are in sync with that, not even totally, but somewhere, even if the, that, that consciousness, that awareness is there, nothing matters. Is, is it that? Is it that? Absolutely. Yeah, resonates. Completely resonates. And you know, this reminds me that uh, what Claudia also was uh, talking about that it's the clinging that is to be taken care of. So it doesn't matter whether I have too much property, luxury, living in a palace. I can still be clinging. You know, I, there is one story which comes to me here. There was this uh, Raja, a uh, king who was taking some guidance from a uh, sadhu, a rishi. And that uh, sage or rishi was sitting in front, not a rishi, I would not say a rishi, maybe a monk, you know, a monk. He was talking to a monk and the monk was giving him some teachings to this king. Now, when they were interacting, immediately this person comes and tells the king that, hey, your palace is on fire. You know, so go get your belongings or whatever, you know, the treasures that you have. And the king is very undisturbed and he says, but right now I am very busy you know, taking the teachings. So it doesn't matter, <laughs> let the palace burn. But this monk, he says, oh, but my begging bowl is there <laughs> in the palace. <laughs> yeah. So now again, what a stark reflection that a king having living with so much luxury, yet unattached, and a monk living with just a begging bowl and still attached to the begging yeah. bowl. So the idea is to let go of that clinging and not to whatever way of living or whatever, you know, like another example comes is uh, Shri Aurobindo, you know, he used to smoke cigars. So one day somebody came to him and he said that, but you sm spoke, you know, you smoke these cigars and it may have a very bad influence of on sadhaks. So he said, okay, never realized that. So, and he dropped that immediately. He never picked it again. That very moment, yeah. You know, so yeah, very inspirational because the non-stickiness that we have to cultivate. Yes. Uh, one more thing that has kind of, uh, that came to my mind while we were doing it, that in the very first line, mother says that to cling to what you believe you know. Uh, yeah. To cling to what you feel, to cling to what you to love, to cling to your habits, to cling to your, to your so-called needs and to cling to the world as it is, that is what binds you. And then she says, you must undo all that, one thing after another. And then also you, as you shared this example of, a, of this lady, you know, uh, and I, the thought that came to my mind that, you know, mother is allowing her to uh, live the way she wants to live or what she loves. Here she's asked, isn't that, I mean, the question that came to my mind was, isn't she also clinging to her way of life? 
to what she loves no in this particular Her case habits. in this particular case the situation is that she is so sincere in her devotion towards the mother that she is ready to let go of her lifestyles she she has american lifestyles although she is an indian and you know she whatever likes to dress up and all that but in this case when she comes to the ashram and wants to devote her life to the mother she is very well ready to give up all the lifestyles that she had been living with uh, so that she can uh, live a new life and then mother says that no you don't have to abandon that so she has that non clinging aspect already no and then mother says no you don't have to all give up all that no you can as long as you want you know you can go ahead and give it out but usually uh, why what happens with us is that we begin to suffer if not have that lifestyle because of that sticky aspect so i think again context to context so to every you are not if 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 one is ready and if he, one is not clinging on to that and if one is it doesn't really matter whether you have that lifestyle or not that's what unclinging would mean yes and if if i am not attached to it then why would then i be even such why would mother suggest that he, because if she has understood that this person is internally at a certain level of is transcending that uh-huh. clinginess uh-huh. yeah then why mother is saying that you must you sh- i mean you're allowed yeah if that come from that person itself and she is willing for that means she is in a state of equality mm-hmm. doesn't matter whether she wears those clothes mm-hmm. or nor or gives up so why then would mother suggest i mean i'm just not yeah, yeah. questioning mother yes, yes, yes. it's just that i'm trying to understand sure it has a much deeper yeah. uh, which are my limited mind questioning logical uh-huh. yeah but, you know but then this is my instrument also to understand i do <laughs> i think one thing which comes to me here is that uh, see whatever conditioning one has first of all the soul has chosen such an experience in this life according to pure bindu the soul chooses its own experience where wherever i want to be born you know where in whatever conditions i want to you know get culturally uh, influenced and we see that each person again this is again very limited reflection but just sharing because it's coming uh, each person in whatever conditions he grows he or she grows they develop a personality you know that sari or whatever american lifestyle that gives her a personality now it could be a charming personality it could be a magnanimous personality solid but it could be any and in the way of yoga all the personalities can be made use of if you understand what i mean you know that if there is a charming personality that is coming of obviously as a result of my conditioning the divine makes use of that personality on the way of yoga so everyone doesn't have to become like a box like a carton box everything is one you know everything is just so the, the divine enjoys the variety that comes in manifestation so and we don't have to give up variety because it adds flavor you know and that's why we see that each sadhak what we read about you know all these stories that are there on mother and shorobindo dot in of all disciples and devotees each one has a very unique personality and we enjoy and we see that wow you know so many approaches and the way is the destination is still the divine and in all ways we can approach so i think it's like for for this flavor of variety also uh you know because we don't have to just do it like mundane way you know we have we can have fun along the way fun and humor and delight along the way so i believe that there is a uh, maybe a delight in seeing that you know each one can have their own personalities and yet expand and grow and be in union with the divine that personality would not become a limiting factor that can add on so the divine would make use for example many people are very strong headed you know very individualistic personalities and the divine makes use of that you know they are given such roles that they are able to use it on the sadhana path the others may be more mild and mellow and 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 the divine makes use of that on the path 
so how beautiful that everything is being being made use of all the instruments can be made made use of so that's what is coming to me but again i think the best would be to you know give the question to yourself and allow mother to answer it why she said that yeah yuan you want to share something yes then many things came to me while we were speaking uh, i agree with with this like sri arobinda didn't uh sri arobinda and mother didn't lay a path which is you know uh, like many religions or spiritual path that you have one practice to do one thing to be this is a path of, of variety and uh, unity in multiplicity um also i remember mother in in the agenda uh, in many passages she she talks about the supramental being uh, her experiences with with the supramental plane uh, and the, the the beings in the supramental plane uh, and she kind of says that it doesn't fit at all in our limited understandings and and morality uh, it's what we usually consider good or bad uh, here it it doesn't relate to to, to the supramental consciousness uh, so so it is not an excuse to do whatever but but yes to 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 understand that any idea uh, about whatever is 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 just a mental limited idea there is uh, some aphorisms of sri aurobindo when he says something like ego was the helper and then ego was the bar and i don't remember it now but it kind uh, it kind of mentions many things like in some in some uh, moment of our life of our way something may be a help and in another time it will be something that limits us so it is very difficult to, to put it in black or white this is good this is bad this is the way or not because maybe this 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 thing that the text says the mother says that you have to only cling to this aspiration is is like because there is no no limit uh, everything we we might have understood even our a new discovery uh, a new consciousness it still would, wouldn't wouldn't be that there is in this path at least there is always new horizon coming yeah thank you yeah. i think one thing which you said that it it should not be an excuse to do just whatever anything i think that is very important because i uh, i was interacting with some people in oroville and uh, they are they are undergoing this very difficult problem of uh, abuse of drugs and many people who have been uh, there for a very long time maybe they when they were kids and they came and still uh, as ad young adults they are there i was talking to them and i almost was in tears because how they were distorting mother's words uh, about this freedom that we were talking of it's like really very crazy because i am just taking up whatever i can take so that i can be so called liberal in the use of drugs but mother herself never uh, you know talked about that drug abuse is allowed or whatever but it was really very very strange that how this limited ego that we and that's why uh, to be safe on this journey the first thing that mother talks about sri aurobindo talks about is find your psychic being so yet you you are free but in that light you are free before that light reason is required that's why you were sharing ego is the helper ego is the bar reason is the helper reason is the bar so before my psychic light comes forward and takes the charge reason has to be there 
but what happening you know what i saw happening there which was very saddening to me that day i was really almost like in deep pain to see what was happening that uh, i don't have i'm not using reason my psychic is not yet in front and i am saying everything is allowed everything is allowed for a krishna because krishna has the krishna consciousness not for me who is still living in ignorance so i think that is something where we have to use reason still and uh, mother and shri aurobindo have delineated such a you know like a direct path 11 these 11 points which they mention about finding the light staying connected with the psychic being but what we do is we forget all those 11 points and we just take up this word from the mother okay everything is allowed or you know whatever we distort it according to our limited perception so i think that's very uh, important and can be very dangerous yes yeah i, I remember it the talk in the agenda with satram when she's speaking about something like well people is so serious and they should you know be more cheerful uh, don't take themselves so seriously and, and and then she says to satram something like but don't go telling this because there are many people who maybe they need to be more serious you know if you are not being serious enough you will hear that uh, you, you don't have to be so serious and you will cling to, to some mistake absolutely yes 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 so again what mother yeah. says that it's not a formula you know so i cannot just cling to any one line from the mother and then just you know make it that formula and then ignore all all the aspects of vigilance sincerity honesty all that mother has talked about you know? so yeah thank you thank you for sharing yes the uh, also in that uh, way um yes when we are uh, close to the divine we have to uh, i mean we need a uh, very clear roots these roots are our values our principles and these roots cannot move i mean maybe can expand yes maybe can grow like they say but have to be the roots of love the roots of faith the roots like the mother say she have in her virtues you know she have like sincerity uh, to be humble she have like these 12 uh, virtues like she plays in her symbol so everyone can say okay i want to adopt this these virtues in my path or maybe i want to make my own virtues but it's not about to say freedom is uh taking whatever i want for my body and destroy the body so like we have speak before is that is clinging to freedom of the uh i will say lower self i don't i don't know how to explain is to cling to to the passions or to the ignorance like you explain monica so that is not the way of krishna so krishna never say that uh, to use substances uh, <laughs> to liberate yourself and that is not so yes um yes thank you for taking this is yes it's very important to be clear <laughs> yeah thank you yes yes yeah so any last uh, comments before we end okay so if not uh, thank you everyone for joining sharing listening and reflecting and yeah may all of us stay connected within thank you thank you thank you bye bye thank you